Good afternoon and welcome to another in vivo review session. Today's session is on tracing a nerve. Uh, tracing a nerve is a pretty important task that we do uh, with our in vivo software. Um, illustrating the layout of that canal is important in uh, making sure uh, where to avoid when we're drilling holes in our patient. Um, so we're going to look at our arch section tab again and uh, take a look at some of the processes of uh, illustrating a nerve um, and then also kind of look at some hints and tips on how to do this. This can be a very easy job if we've got a very well corticated canal uh, and it can be really tough uh, if the patient doesn't have a well corticated canal. Um, so let's take a look. Uh, first thing that I want to do here is uh, avoid some of this extra information that's kind of distracting me right now. We've got a full head here and um, we're really going to be dealing with uh, the mandible only. So um, I'm going to go ahead and click my little adjust range and orientation checkbox right here. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my cross sections uh, and my panoramic section here are really only illustrating uh, what I need to see here. So I'm going to kind of constrain to uh, you know the mandible and, and uh, the canal up to where logically a lingual exists here. Uh, and that's uh, what my cross-sectional views are illustrating here. Once I've got that set, I can uncheck the box and it's off to the races here. Um, I'm going to drag my my uh, axial session, section down here. That's the uh, little red line. And pull that down so that I get a pretty good idea of how I want to construct my spline points here. I want to redirect these things over the uh, um, anatomy here so that I'm illustrating where that canal is probably located. Again, just to review, the uh, art section can be used to draw any curved line uh, in space. And uh, ideally, we're, we're putting this where it does the most good at illustrating our, our uh, pathway through this mandible. Uh, I'm just going to move these spline points so I have control of this curve. I'll reposition a couple of these. Uh, and my, my uh, um, panoramic section here is, is illustrating that point. I can make that a little bit bigger and reposition it so it fits inside this box. Um, now you can see that uh, as I kind of uh, um, move buccal lingual here using my wheel mouse that I can pretty much see my um, canal emerging uh, out of uh, out of uh, out of the pattern that this uh, pan is is making up here. We've got some pretty confusing anatomy here, though, so it's tough to know at this point without doing a little investigation what represents the canal, uh, what is just trabeculations, or what is potential um, accessory canals over here. All right. Uh, which brings up an interesting point. Uh, there's two schools of thought on doing this. Um, either you can start at the mental foramen, which tends to be the easiest way to do it. Uh, if you've got a well-corticated canal, um, some people say, hey, start at the, the back posterior uh, most section here where the lingual starts to widen out. Uh, it's easy to find, and as you work your way forward, you're more likely to find uh, accessory canals and uh, illustrate those. Um, we can do uh, one of each each way here, okay? So uh, we'll go ahead and and uh, take a look at uh, at drawing those canals in uh, in in both ways. We'll start with this one, uh, starting right at the mental foramen. So I'm going to go ahead and drag my cross sectional views right over there. We can see that foramen emerging right here, uh, and we can start by grabbing a new nerve. You know, the, the uh, standard default diameter is 2 millimeters. And we can change that at any time, uh, including after the fact. Um, so we can start drawing as a 2 millimeter diameter and change it after the fact. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and just uh, start by clicking on New Nerf. And I'm going to just click a couple points here. 
and you have the choice, of course, of, uh, of moving through space and illustrating it uh, on the cross-sectional views here, if that makes the most sense, if that's the easiest way to see it, or by doing it right here on the panoramic section. And you can see that I already started going wrong here. No problem. All we need to do is click Delete, and the last segment that we put in deletes. Now I'm going to use my wheel mouse here, the, the little uh, uh, wheel to scroll facial lingual here. Um, and what I'm doing is trying to determine what's the maximum diameter of this tube. You know, as I see that corticated canal, I'm going to wheel a little bit, facial lingual, and see if I can determine where the widest point of that is. And then I can start putting my little uh, segments, segments of the uh, canal in place here uh, of my um, uh, marker, if you will. Again, anytime we get too far, or we put one wrong, all you need to do is come up here to node, delete, and I'll take off the last little piece that you put in place. I'm going to continue to roll this back now. You can double check our work over here, see if it makes sense. Um, again, control, left click and drag, we can zoom stuff in and shift click and drag will reposition things. Now look, I just drew two new lines here, so we'll just delete, delete, and bring it back to where we were. See how the edge of the canal is just a little bit wider. If we really are um, beyond the ability to make this uh, a wider using the diameter control over here. We can literally start a new canal overlapped on top of it, a new diagram uh, showing us uh, um, how it, it uh, widens out here. And we'll do that with this canal in just a moment. Continue to come back here, click out points as we move further back. Lingual. And when we're done, we just say done. All right, now we can scroll back and see how this looks. Seems to be tracking. Reasonably. There we go. Now we can see that this is, uh, has been illustrated in the other views that we see here. So in all the uh, three-dimensional views, that uh, canal will be filled in. If I go back to art section and I highlight this, and I'll get a little brighter red here, and I can go ahead and change the diameter of it. And that again, changes the diameter in further views that we're looking at. Let's do the other side. And we'll start at the back and work our way forward. Um, we'll find the center of that tube. Click on new nerve. Start working our way forward. Kind of tough to see here. Might be useful to look at it from this aspect.
still looking at the center of that tube. Looks a little bit better corticated now. Yeah, it kind of doubles around on itself and comes out. See how this looks now. We'll check our work. Again, we could highlight this, change the diameter of it, make it even thicker. Actually, that two and a half millimeter seems to be working pretty well here. So there you go. We've got both our canals illustrated on this patient. I've been using a scan that was produced by our uh, Scanora um, from Sordex. Um, might be useful for us to see uh, an OP300 scan. Uh, a smaller scan, so let's go ahead and do that. First, I want to just talk a little bit more about this, these nerves and uh, how we illustrate those. Uh, we can turn off or on so that we can see where we're sitting. Uh, if that's distracting you while you're tracing, uh, this is a big help. Um, we can also go ahead and click on the x-ray. We can't actually uh, draw the nerve in the x-ray because um, it really takes away all the depth. Uh, but it sure can help us um, illustrate whether we've got it in the right spot. All right, so we, uh, when we see it as an x-ray where it's got a, a, a more depth to it than one voxel at a time, um, this uh, is a, a big help to be able to uh, turn our, our nerve on and off to see if, uh, if it makes sense, if it looks like it's laying in that canal properly, and it seems to. We've got some big... Um, trabecular spaces back here that are kind of confusing, but don't appear to be accessory canals. You can take issue with me if you will, but uh, um, it seems to not be accessory canals at this point. You know, um, these brightness and contrast controls have a huge bearing on what you see. And again, I uh, urge you not to ever be satisfied. Don't have a one-size-fits-all kind of attitude uh, about where those brightness and contrast controls go. Um, you always want to be fussing with these um, and make you um, see what you want to see uh, at that point in time. This uh, can do an awful lot uh, to help boost your visibility of things uh, as you're working through tracing these nerves. And, and this is n nowhere more true than when we've got a poorly corticated canal. Uh, constantly be playing with this brightness and contrast uh, and uh, you'll be able to see things a little bit better. We also have the color presets. And again, uh, once we press on this, it changes the colors that we see representing the tissue. And you can just toggle through these different color presets. And sometimes these can be very helpful to help you um, pick out a poorly corticated canal uh, or to see where the upper and lower limits are of a existing reasonably uh, corticated canal. Um, when we uh, move on uh, next week uh, into or on the 3rd of August into uh, our implant tabs here, uh, our, our uh, illustrated canal travels with. And this is going to be an important thing when we're setting an implant uh, to make sure that we set our alarms properly and that we've got a reasonable diameter and that we've got that canal filled in pretty well uh, so that you can set your implants without giving it an awful lot of concern that you're getting too close to that, uh, that canal. All right, um, the cross-section uh, tab up here is helping us um, see what's going on. The three cross-sections here run perfectly perpendicular to the, to the panoramic plane, uh, this curved line that we've, that we've uh, constructed in space here, which represents this plane. Um, we can set uh, different thicknesses. Uh, we can set a different layout, too. So if we're uh, more comfortable with a different layout, 
uh, we can set up for uh, a lot more cross sections. Typically, this multiple more cross section kind of thing is is only used when we're printing things out. Uh, but if uh, you're used to reading, uh, using multiple cross sections, a lot more uh, light box kind of uh, view here, then go for it. Uh, whatever helps you visualize what you need to see, doctor, is, is the best thing uh, for all of us here. All right, so we can set the thickness more like film images, uh, and we can uh, change the uh, width of the cross sectional views. Um, uh, lots of different uh, aspects that be, can be controlled uh, of this cross-sectional uh, information that we've got. I'll go back to the, to the default and I'm going to go ahead and open up an OP300 case uh, so that we can see a little bit smaller um, uh, amount of information here. So let's go ahead and open up a OP300. This case already has an implant in place here. Um, we're going to go ahead and again uh, draw our spline points so that they are uh, helping us find that canal easily. Drag these a little bit in space. This one's almost like cheating. Look at that nice tube going through here. They don't always look like this. So we'll use our controls here again. We can start either at the back or the front. Whatever seems to be the easiest for visualizing what you need to see. So let's, here's uh, on this cross-sectional view here, we see our, our foramen. We'll start uh, tracing a nerve from here. big thick. We can change the diameter of that easily. Just keep tracking with us. But as far as we can take it here, and we'll keep extending it until we get to the end of it. When we're done, we say done. We'll probably make this a little bit thicker. This could easily be a candidate for our two and a half millimeters here. See how that works. Not too bad. to piece. That canal quite obviously doubles back on itself and I missed that part. Look at that. Room all the way back here. Let's start this from scratch.
there we get her started that loop back That more accurately, I believe, follows the canal. Um, let's uh, pull the opacity down a little bit and the brightness so you can see all that follows the contour of that. We can cut away on the sagittal plane here. Yeah, it doesn't look too unreasonable there. Looks like it follows. If we look on our art section, again, if we pull up the panoramic x-ray view, see a little bit more closely how that curves in front of itself and doubles back. Of course, the measurement scale can be helped. Uh, the measurement scale follows this spline, so uh, we can overlay that measurement on it and be able to pull measurement points off when we're looking at our cross-sectional views and be able to translate those right away into um, both measurement reticles here across the arch. Uh, and across the front here. So if you're working a particularly uncorticated canal and uh, run into kind of difficulties, you can stop where you're at, um, take a look at the cross-sectional view and be able to uh, discern whether you're making progress or not on uh, tracing that nerve. Again, uh, tracing these nerves is an important step uh, towards having a successful implant. Uh, knowing where the um, pitfalls are that could uh, make your case less successful uh, and your uh, patient's life uh, less uh, quality um, are important when uh, we're getting ready to set an implant. Do you have any questions at this point? 